Okay, I've just pressed record and I'm going to talk on meditation, meditation styles and my take on meditation and also with specifics on, on mantras um, and, and the different forms. Okay, so one of the first meditations I learned, it was the very first thing after having a near-death spiritual experience and a message actually from the divine that I needed to find a spiritual solution. I'd only at the time um, read two authors that were spiritual, I was not into spirituality, Deepak Chopra and Louise Hay. And Deepak mentioned transcendental meditation. So I thought, well, I'll try that on my, my spiritual, started my spiritual journey, where they give you a mantra and you basically say that mantra over and over again, give you a bit of guidance on how to do the mantra over and over again. Uh, it was what I needed at the time as an entry, as an entry thing, because I was so disconnected from source that, um, and my head was going at hundred miles an hour that a mantra at that time was appropriate to my level of severe disconnection from the divine, you know, to you know, be an entry into start, starting to stop the thoughts going at a million miles an hour. And that just provided enough space for me actually at that time, you know, the, the piece that I got from that, from where I was before was correct. And it was probably the right tool at the right time uh, to get entry level spirituality. So, so when, and I think, you know, there has to be a thing of which meditative practice you're being drawn to, what's God intuiting that is your next stage in development, and what's appropriate to you at the time of your spiritual journey, and also if there's uh, extraordinary circumstances. So, you know, exploring a few different uh, meditation things um, is fine. I mean, classically, there's the mantra. Um, meditation, what does meditation do? Well, meditation is dissolving or silencing the ego, which is the block from source, you know, being a channel for source. So, so different meditations and techniques, in fact, all spiritual work is in fact, that's authentic spiritual work is on removing the blocks to um, expressing the divine. So, you know, even any type of spiritual work, um, you know, in, for example, 12 steps, step, step 11, is um, prayer and meditation, but actually even step one, admitting that one isn't, um, uh, one isn't, uh, hasn't got the source intrinsic into the ego's defiance of source. Uh, step two, th the knowledge that there's something deeper or, or, more, or more connected to source than what one is currently, is all helping you to connect to, to source. So, but you know, for people who have asked, if you feel an, a need to meditate, it's usually, it's, you're probably right, because something knows you're not in sublime joy and peace and being who you're meant to be. I mean, something knows that, otherwise you wouldn't be meditating. So it's probably correct. And uh, so the thing then goes, spiritual seekers ask, well, what's the perfect meditation for me right now? Well, that depends as well, depending where you are on your journey. Uh, it's the level of consciousness. So if you're in if your thoughts are at 100 miles an hour and you've got a lot of repressed feelings and fear, you're in trauma, you're disconnected, you know, something advanced like the observer, the witnesser of thoughts, uh, is going to seem really like not, not applicable because it seems way too far away. Um, something like even feel the feelings or let the letting go process from Dr. Hawkins. Um, you may even need some priming before you're even able to do that. You may be dissociated from your feelings, or you may be in an active addiction, in which case you might need a 12-step program to stop even the, the outer expression of your avoidance of, 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 of what's trapped within. So that may be needed before you can even attempt meditation. So it's appropriate to the thing. But mantra, mantra meditation, I mean, the thing that I really do believe from um, Hawkins and I, I trusted him implicitly, is that whatever practice you do, it has a level of vibration, uh, how strongly close it is linked to the divine and how powerful it is to connect you to the divine uh, and how ego, ego dismantling it is in its power based on truth. Now, no teacher can give you a man, no school of thought, no teacher, no practice. They can only give you a mantra in, in accordance to their vibration. You know, like um, the 12-step group, if there was a meditation practice, they don't actually there, but 
the medita you know everything in 12 steps is written at a certain spiritual vibration which is appropriate to the audience that would come in um you know um uh, and it is appropriate like someone who's in alcoholism uh, and, and makes a plea to divinity for help may end up in, a, in an AA group. Um, however, someone who's now ready to go to the last stage of enlightenment and dissolve completely their ego and be one with source may end up bumping into Buddha in Tibet uh, and, and then join a monastery. So, and they're ready for that. Uh, and the, you see, so what about th things like Om? And then you've got things like I, I, I wrote a thing to, to, to the TM saying I would never reveal my mantra. But generally, the mantra there, I think, is entry level. It's not going to get you to Buddhahood. It's not going to get you to a oneness with God. But it's a very good TM, in my view and my experience, is a very good entry level mantra at starting to get a, a, a glimpse of a serenity one has never experienced. Uh, but at the time, if someone told me to say Om, you know, I'd have gone, I can't do this, it's not working for me. So it wouldn't be appropriate. Um, certain people, and it also dependent on one's inclination, one's, uh, whether one is Western or Eastern, uh, and also you have to look at your past lives, there'll be a certain gravity and a certain resonance with certain things. Like if in this lifetime you're a Christian, or if in past lifetimes you've been, you know, a monk in a Christian monastery, uh, you'll find that. You know, even though something else might be more powerful and more people are getting really good, you might find that, you know, uh, Christian type um, prayers said over and over again um, are good. I mean, Hawkins talked about the Lord's Prayer um, and I did the Lord's Prayer. It's got, it's got a very, very high vibration. And every time I've done it at 100 miles an hour, when my, my ass is on fire, God's always delivered. So that, that has such a powerful resonance and it's such a high frequency that if done with 100% conviction, it, it does bring in awesome miracles. I mean, for example, the 12 steps, we intuitively know this. It's kind of embedded within the collective of the 12 steps. I've, you know, 12 years of going to meetings every day in different fellowships. You know, you'll hear old timers say, you know, I was in trouble. I just repeated the serenity prayer over and over again in my head and it all turned out okay. So the serenity prayer, has a certain vibration you can use it like non-stop just like a mantra but i would say like the tm for me is a lower vibration i mean this sounds judgmental but to take what you want leave the rest and it's good for entry level you know if you're like a total lunatic you know tm is quite good um when you're ready for the uh, spirituality of a 12-step group and you practice the 12 steps you know you'll f you'll find a resonance with just saying the serenity prayer over and over again the um uh, if if um, if you've got some kind of uh, uh, allegiance to Christ, you may find the Lord's Prayer. I mean, I know the Lord's Prayer um, is the one I do. I believe it's got a higher vibration than the Serenity Prayer, which is a bit more of a dumb, dumbed down sort of low. I know that sounds a bit judgmental. There you go. And um, and uh, okay, so those are the Christian ones. Now, Om. You know, you might find a thing. Om. I mean, Om is very powerful. It's at the level of um, enlightenment. 100% dissolution of the ego. You know, if you're sitting in a Tibetan monastery, I'm joking a bit, and everyone is arming, and they're arming for the whole day, um, you're ready for that. And you're going to go into sublime states of oneness and bliss. Because, but, you know, try giving that to someone in alcohol, you know, they just won't resonate with that. They're not ready for it. So other classical forms of meditation, I wrote a bit about it in my book, you know, like having a flame and looking at the image of the flame. I mean, I prefer to, uh, which we all do, there are certain spiritual images that make you feel strong and silence your mind. So you might have a, a picture of Christ that you might just go into silence and reflect on. Uh, uh, this came to mind, funny enough. Um, what is it? Um, still my thoughts. What's the, I've forgotten the Christian thing. Um, uh, so it's when your thoughts go still, let my thoughts be still and know I'm one with God, something like that. There is a famous one, I forgot what it is. In stillness, I'm one with God. Anyway, there's a famous one. So I mean, like looking at a picture of Christ and repeating that, I'm one with God when my thoughts still, would probably be a lovely mantra. I just made, I didn't make that up, it came from somewhere. So they all have different levels of power to this, uh, this uh, you know, 
even probably saying I am, I am P, I'm, you know, I'm one with peace would probably work as well. So different mantras, there's um, flames, there's images, um, there's um, different levels of consciousness. Like feeling the feelings is a form of meditation, even though it's a meditation where you don't use thoughts or your head. So it's very advanced. So it's not labeling or, or allowing thoughts to emerge and just allowing everything to be experienced as is. So if you're able to do that, that means you, I mean, I, I would say you're very far away. I mean, you don't even need a mantra as a tool or a prayer as a tool to go deeper. You know, you, you, you bypass the thinking head needing to be acted on as a crutch to go to, to sort of steady the stillness. You're able to, to, to go to a more advanced level. So those are advanced ones, feel the feelings, observer. Um, forget the head, what's observing the head? Forget the feelings, what's observing the feelings? Forget this world, what's observing the world? What will be here when the world passes away? What will be here when all thoughts are gone? What will be here when the body has gone? What is it that's always here and never passes? So, so we're doing the observer and then getting the spiritual awakening that there's something here which is not transient, which will never pass away and is not the body and not thoughts, not even anything in this world that's transitory. So that, you know, you can't do that on day one unless, you know, you've got an intrinsic aptitude to be ready for that. Any other forms of meditation? Well, you know, if you're not sure, I mean, try a few. Uh, so, but by its fruits, you shall know it. By the level of miracles and the level of oneness and connection and joy that one is expressing at a higher level, you'll know if something is appropriate for you at, at that time for where you are in your spiritual journey. Uh, but if you're not sure, I mean, you can always pray. I, uh, Dear God, I pray for a miracle. Please, please um, show me, bring to me uh, the right meditation to help me to be one with you. So you could do that. So anyway, I think those are the different ones. It is appropriate to the time, but try a few. And uh, my tip, any tips I can give you? Well, devotion, you know, if you're blasé, I think a lot of these meditations are very sacred and have great intrinsic power if they come from a, a very high vibration source. So you want to have sacred devotion and intention in doing it. If you don't have it, if it's kind of blasé, then check, you know, your motives are out of alignment or ego sabotaging it, then try and clear that. Um, and uh, I also found that when you clear your blocks to whatever practice you're doing, there's an intensity in it. You know, there is an intensity in clearing away something that comes like an inspiration. It's like something intuitively knows there's something blocking the divine. And, 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 and one is doing whatever practice it is, there, there comes an intensity, almost like a fervor, almost like a, a, a frenzy is probably the wrong word, but something gives you energy to clear it out of you. And there, there is a, and I know that when that comes upon me, it's like divinity is adding its muscle to just get rid of something because your ego is not, your ego is never willingly wanting to clear anything. It wants to remain in dominion. So I talked a lot longer on that one than I thought, but I'm going to press stop. Let me press stop.